I'm making this quick video to show you how to run a t-test where you get the answers, the number of the answers, how many people scored one, how many people scored two, etc., etc. But there's no given mean or standard deviation. I've seen a couple of government reports, survey reports, that kind of look like this, and they expect you to go ahead and calculate them. So I'm going to just make this real quick video to show you how that I did it. So you got to think columns, right? So every variable is a column in SPSS. So you would think that you, you have a column named, um, you know, how likely are you to purchase an alcoholic beverage when you go to an elegant restaurant? So 263 people answered never. So you would have 263 cells with the number one in them. And then underneath that, you'd have 433 with twos in them, etc., etc., all the way down. Now, with this don't know, we're not going to use the data, but I'm going to just, instead of deleting the, the 34 participants, I'm just going to leave them as blank. To turn these counts into real values, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a cell next to this, and I'm going to go to the function bar and hit equals. And I'm going to say, take that cell and then shift eight, which is the asterisk, which is multiply in Excel times that cell, right? So if I, oh, if I added up 263 ones, I'd get 263. Now I'm going to multiply each score times their N to get a total number. And through the power of Excel, I'm simply going to cut and paste that one. And again, I'm not going to use the, the don't knows. Okay. They're kind of worthless to me. So now I'm going to get a, a big N, a total sample size, capital N equals, and I'm going to pick that cell, and I'm simply going to go up to the auto sum, and it lines it out for me, click, boom. So that's how many males we had ordering over here. I'm going to do the same thing for females, control C, control V, boom. So did that work? Yes, it did. See, it shifted them all automatically, and they look good to me. So let's go ahead and put the ends down there, too. Okay, perfect. So we have the female in, and the male ends, and we have their total scores. Now it's time to find the mean. So the mean is... We're going to sum up all the possible scores, right? This is the sum of their scores. I'm going to put that right there. We're going to go to auto sum. And it lined it up for me very nice. Boom. So that is, that's the sum of all these scores. So again, think of a column with 263 ones, 433 twos, blah, 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 all the way down to 551 fives. If you added all those up, you would get 9,116. And how do you calculate the mean? is you add them up and divide by the sample size. Okay, so I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna move this sample size up here so I can get some working room. So there's our N. So now our mean is gonna be equals, right? It's the total sample, that's the total. And we're gonna divide by sample size. So that's our mean, 3.32. That wasn't hard. Now let's keep going. Now let's do the females. Same thing. I'm just going to, let me just cut and paste this guy right here. Oh, you can't see that, can you? Okay, let's do this. Cut and paste, pasty, pasty. Just the values. And I want all the formatting to be the same. All right, and now our mean is going to be the sum of this. Let's get that sum, auto sum. There it is. So our mean is going to be equals the total divided by the sample size. And there's our mean. So we're going to go ahead and just, we're only using two decimal places. Our sample size is huge, okay? So I'm treating it like a population. And if we go out a couple thousand place values, I seriously doubt that's going to make any issues. 
Okay, so here we go. So we got the means and the, and the sample sizes, but not the standard deviations from each different group here. Now, this is where it's going to get kind of ugly. Give me a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get set up. Here is the formula to calculate a population standard deviation. That's the Greek letter mu. That's the population mean. Minus each individual in the study. And that has to be squared every time for every participant. It has to be squared and then you add them all up. And then whatever that total is, you're going to divide by the entire sample size, which is in. So give me another second here. All right, I'm going to try to use some logic. So for this first cell, I'm going to, I'm going to build in these cells here, this formula. All right, so the first cell is simply going to be the, the mean, right? The population mean. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go equals... And I'm going to put, that's the population mean. And I don't want it to slide around. When I'm, when I'm sliding around this formula, I'm going to put a dollar sign before the B and after the B. I don't know if it needs it both, but it always works for me. So I just stick with what I know. Dollar sign, dollar sign, equals, boom. Right, so when I slide this guy around, it doesn't change. It freezes the value. So this is, this is the moo. Moo. Moo which is the Greek letter for the population mean. Nothing fancy there, okay. Yeah, let's make that bigger. Okay, and this next one is going to be the mu minus the individual score. And what was the score for the first one? It was a 1, right? So it's simply going to be equals, it's going to be the mu minus their score was one, right? So those guys were all ones. So there's that. So again, this is just for one one person that scored a one and never orders drinks. So the moo minus one is that. All right, so we got the moo minus one part out of the way. Now what comes next is we have to square them. So I'm just going to put in squared here. And sorry about all the format stuff. I'm going to take that cell. I'm going to go to the function bar, hit equals. I'm going to say I want that cell. Shift six. I get the little carrot and then two. That means I'm going to square that cell. Boom. So that's that. And I'm going to add two decimal places. What the heck? Don't cost nothing. Bam. Now, with this... So that's for one person, right? That is the population mean minus an individual squared. That's what that value is. How many do I have? I have 263 of those. So I'm going to pick that cell. Go to Mr. Function Bar. Equals. I want that squared difference. Shift 8. That's the asterisk multiplied by that. Equals. And that gives us our total. I'm just going to call it total here. Total. So that's just strictly for the ones. Now here comes the magic time. Because these are all formulas. I can simply scroll down. And it does it automatically. Yay. And again, we're not using 34. I'm leaving the 34 in there, but I'm leaving it as blanks. Okay, so I might get a lot of feedback on that. But, you know, everybody does it their own way. Okay, again, back to the formula here. Let me move this over so you can see a little bit. This guy. So now we're going to do what the sigma says. It says add them all up. I'm simply going to go here. Auto sum. It picked them for me, right? Remember, it likes columns. There is my total. So that's basically the top of that numerator. And I'm going to divide that by our total sample size, which is in over here. So I'm going to go to Mr. Function Bar again, equals, take that cell and divide that by our sample size. And that gives us that. That is not quite the answer because now we have to take square root. We will square it again. And when we use the T formula here in a minute, but... 
I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of that. I'm going to go to the function bar, equals, take that cell, shift, six, I get the caret. That tells the computer the next number coming is an exponent. And to take a square root, we use the exponent of 0.5. Yes, the square root symbol is the same as the exponent of a half. Boom. That is our standard deviation for males. Thank you very much. One, point, two, three. Okay. So give me a second. I'm going to do the females in the blink of an eye. Because everything's a formula here, I'm just going to take that out. We really don't need that because this is males. And watch, watch what I do here. I'm going to delete all these numbers. Then I'm going to jump over to the females. Where are you? Okay, there's the female data. And I'm going to copy. And I'm going to go pasty. And 3.26. Okay, so what do we got going on here? So, is this the sum of that? Well, let's look at the formula. Sum J6 through J11. There's J6 through J11. Or J10. Well, it doesn't make a difference, right? Because that's a zero. Okay, that's fine. That's right. And that is J12. That's the total. Divided by... The sample size, D14, D14 is correct. Right, so that's that's the total here. That's after it's been squared, the total, add it up, divided by the sample size, there's that. And then we take the square root of that, which is already done. So that is our standard deviations for the females. Wasn't that amazing? Okay, give me a second. So here is the dreaded independent t-test formula okay so this is their the means are subtracted in the top part of the fraction this bottom part is what we call the pooled variance and we're going to go ahead and calculate them and the numerator is easy you simply subtract the two so we're calling the females group two and the males group one and we're going to go to we're going to go equals and i'm going to take the male mean and subtract the female mean. It really doesn't matter which order because uh, most people don't realize that there is no such thing as a negative t-score. Right? We always take the absolute values. So there's the numerator of that fraction. All right. The denominator is what's going to be the killer. Calculating the pooled variance is difficult. So let's go ahead and see what we can figure out here. Uh, let me get a couple of these going. All right, so S1 is the standard deviation of group one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that cell, hit equals. And our group one standard deviation was that number. Enter. And then we're gonna square that, right? The standard deviation squared is, is simply the variance, right? We could have just kept the variance, but what the heck. We're gonna take that, shift, six the carrot and then put in two that means we're going to square that cell there's that cell squared our n1 is equal to our sample size of number one which is the males enter wasn't that easy so now we're going to take the squared standard deviation or the variance and we're going to divide it by the sample size of n1 that's why i laid them out like this so we're going to go to equals the squared standard deviation, that little tiny number, we're going to divide it by the big number. So this is going to come up with a little tiny number. We're probably going to have to go out to like four place values just to make it show up. So yes, let's stick to four place values. And 0 .006 is good to me. Now let's do part two here. Let me shift it over for you. So S2 is the female group. So I'm simply going to do equals... Stand, so as the standard deviation of those is that, we're going to square that. There's that. And our N2 is 
into <laughs> okay that boom and then the last thing is we're going to divide our variance by sample size and so we basically got the same thing 0 0.006 over 0 0.006 so again this number represents that and this number represents that now, because the sample size is so fantastically large, um, even though there's only a difference of six one hundredths between the means, that might be enough to be considered significant. Again, because your sample size is so large and, and these standard deviations are, are tiny divided by such a giant sample size is going to give you a very, 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 very small pooled variance. So now what we have to do is we have to add these two up. And let me just pick a cell here. Um, oh, yeah, I did that already, didn't I? Bam. That's not it. So I'm going to go to equals. I want that plus that, right? That adds the two up. That's not quite our answer. Now we need to take the square root of that. And, right, so I cleverly put in square root there, so I'm going to pick that cell, equals, that, raised to, shift, 6, caret, and then point 0.5, again, uh, the square root is the exponent of point 0.5, and there is our denominator, that is our denominator, bam, okay, so we have the numerator, we have the denominator. So our finally, our finally, our final t-test score, t equals. I'm gonna make all this stuff really big. Put it down here. Our t equals this number. Let me put it over here. Is the numerator divided by the denominator, and that equals 1.81. Yay! Now we can find the p-value. Pretty easy. Uh, P value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a cell. I'm going to use Excel to find the P value of a T score of 1.81. And we're going to go to the function bar. We're going to make sure we're in statistical. And we are. And we're going to go to T test. T test. There's a bunch of them. And I always get them messed up here. Now, is this a one-tail or a two-tail test? If we're just looking for a significant difference between the two, without trying to pick a side, males or females, that makes it a two-tail test. So let's see what this says. Um, T distribution, a left-handed, no, that's not us. T distribution, two tails, I believe that is us. Right, that X is our T score. And degrees of freedom is a lot. And let's see what that gives us. Okay, boom. So our T-score is 1.81. Degrees of freedom is the total number of both groups minus the number of groups. So it's going to be, let's see if I can do this in my head. Looks like 53, 5406. 5406 minus 2 is 5404. That's what teaching algebra for 20 years will do for you. Boom. And that is your p-value. And you know what? It's not quite significant. So in other words, there is no significant difference between the number of people, males or females, when it comes to how frequently they drink at these fancy restaurants. So it was close, right? It was almost borderline, but it wasn't quite there. So that's how that's how you would do those. I hope that helps. MGZ out.